Adam Rose was a strange one, wasn't he? He spent forever in WWE developmental as Leo Kruger, a character that everyone was vaguely invested in but not enough to truly care about, before morphing into flamboyant rock star type Adam Rose seemingly overnight. Rose was accompanied to the ring by a group of enthusiastic partygoers known as the Rosebuds, who'd support and eventually catch him during his leap of faith in his entrance, before dancing off into the night. They were a conveyor belt of developmental performers, independent talents, and completely random individuals. And now that it's been a minute since Rose's release, shall we have a look at some of them? Honourable mentions to Blue Pants Jade from TNA, Chad Gable, Tessa Blanchard, Elias Sampson, and Justin Gabriel for donning the bunny suit. I'm Ben from What Culture, and here are 10 wrestlers who masqueraded as Rosebuds. Number 10. Taylor Hendricks and Scarlett Bordeaux. By late 2014, everything was sort of going to the dogs for Adam Rose and the Exotic Express, as focus began to shift towards the bunny as opposed to Rose. After being tombstoned by Kane, because of course he was, the bunny was seen wearing a neck brace with Scarlett Bordeaux and Taylor Hendricks on his arm. Hendricks is of course best known for her time in TNA, where she was a successful gut check contestant who was subsequently told to lose weight by Dixie Carter in one of the company's more ridiculous moments. She's also performed extensively in Ring of Honor, which is where many will know Bordeaux from. Bordeaux claims to have worked as a rosebud around 15 times in total. Hmm. Number 9. Jimmy Jacobs Around the same time that Rose's issues with Kane began, Jacobs appeared as a rosebud, doing so on a couple of occasions. Until posing for a photo with his Bullet Club buddies and being harshly released, Jacobs worked for WWE as a writer, although he is without a doubt best known for his time in Ring of Honor, where he was a five-time Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champion. He's worked for WWE in a number of enhancement roles in the past, getting a DQ win over Eddie Guerrero back in 2005 before unsuccessfully challenging Nunzio for the Cruiserweight Champion chip on velocity, but you know, being a rosebud is probably the highlight. Number 8. Solomon Crow. Before Adam Rose himself appeared on screen, we got a look inside one of his parties. The very first Rosebud we saw? None other than Solomon Crow. Now, Crow never really caught on in NXT due to a weird gimmick, which led to his release in 2015. Many will know him better as Sammy Callahan, longtime cult favorite on the independent scene. Although he's probably best known for his time in CZW, you may also know him from Lucha Underground, where he's called Jeremiah Crane. Number 7. Simon Gotch. Before Simon Gotch began teaming with Aiden English as the Vaud villains, he was an 11 year veteran of the independent scene. After the indies, however, Gotch was a rosebud. He was a part of the party from the very beginning, known for his preposterous mustache and fondness for red and white striped shirts. A fetching red fez often completed the look, although Gotch's facial expressions generally gave off a sinister air, which is about right, really, because apparently prior to his release, he was a real dick. Number 6. Carmella. Six months before she made her real NXT debut as Enzo and Big Cass's hairdresser, do you remember that? God, that was weird. Carmella appeared as a fairly nondescript member of Adam Rose's first Rosebud party. Her screen time was brief, but she was there all right, a face in the dimly lit crowd that signaled the evolution of Leo Kruger to Adam Rose. Carmella is more than likely going to be with the WWE for the long haul, so as her career progresses, it'll be interesting to look back and remember the time that the inaugural Women's Money in the Bank ladder match winner was a throw away member of the Rosebuds. Number 5. Kalisto. Kalisto holds a unique position amongst Rosebud alumni in that he was the only one to feature as a Rosebud in his legitimate wrestling gear. Much like many mentioned in this list, Kalisto was involved in the initial Adam Rose Rosebud party, even getting a spotlight thrown on him by Rose himself. Kalisto was twirling a lightsaber thing of sorts, encouraging Rose to tell us to take a look at this little fellow. The ridiculing of size for Kalisto started early, it would seem. Number 4. Alexa Bliss. Bliss has gone from the best part of her faction with Blake and Murphy to arguably one of the most consistent female performers in WWE, which makes it all the more impressive that she started life as a humble rosebud back in March 2014. Once again, we go to Rose's pre-debut party, and Alexa Bliss is found not in the group of revelers cavorting around the room, but sat next to Adam Rose himself. Ooh, I wonder if he knew she'd achieve things he could only dream of. Number 3. Braun Strowman Yep, Strowman appeared on a number of occasions as the Roman gladiator in the Exotic Express, tasked with being the man in charge of catching Rose during his leap of faith and also performing security duties at Rose's parties. Strowman was perfect for the role, although luckily this was all tweaked before the big man came to TV proper. He may be scary now, but in 2014, he was all about having a good time. You have to think Adam Rose knew something that maybe we don't. Number 2. James Ellsworth. Strangely, Ellsworth looked fairly miserable during his run as a rosebud. Why? 
Here's why. Could it be because he was dressed as a cheeseburger? Nobody really wants to be dressed as a cheeseburger, even if it means you're part of the biggest party in town. It's either that or Ellsworth just has one of those faces that naturally looks quite sad. The lack of chin probably helps, as the man with two hands and a fighting chance generally reverts to sad puppy dog when his face is resting. Ellsworth is the weirdest success story of 2016, but his WWE run began inside a cheeseburger costume. Wrestling is weird. Number one. Becky Lynch. The last kicker seems to have taken a longer route than most to the top of her profession, including a brief retirement in the mid-2000s, but she's been nothing but a success since arriving in NXT in 2013. Lynch didn't make her TV debut until 2014, however, and this was after she appeared with Rose at the forefront of his exotic express. You'd be forgiven for not recognizing her, however, as the iconic orange hair wasn't quite there yet. But front and center of the Rosebuds, she was just another face in the drug-addled crowd that Rose liked to drag around with him. The killer in you is the power in me Please to me, you so good to see The killer in you will keep me alive Back to back, self-sacrifice Hey guys, thanks for making it to the end of the video, aren't you a star? Uh, don't forget to like, share and subscribe below, and also there's probably more content flowing up above my head, so why not check that out as well? Could be a laugh. Probably. Six out of ten.